On the other hand, easy access to Kaiser Colosseum could completely shut down an opponent after a strong opening, making a comeback much harder and sealing games before they even really started. This kind of situation has always been undesirable, and this change follows in the footsteps of cards like Royal Oppression, allowing players to turn around games more often. You know, I don't think Konami could ever have predicted how poorly that blog post would age over the years since 2016, but here we are. Mystic Mine. A better Kaiser Coliseum. We're all doomed. But anyway, joking aside, hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about what I believe to be the best side deck cards for approaching the Mystic Mine Burn deck matchup. This deck is uh, very degenerate in the way that it just tries to win the game by a complete and total lack of interaction between both players. I mean, you can say what you want to about the combo decks of the format, but at least you playing into a combo decks board at least has some form of player-based choice there. And you just, you, there's usually something you can take away from that in terms of, I did this wrong, I should play this card next time because that allows me to have a better shot. Whereas the Mystic Mind deck, it it's pretty hard to take away any sort of uh, knowledge from anything when you're not physically allowed to activate any of what your deck's monster effects are. So, anyway, what I'm going to be showing you is uh, basically the cards that I find the most successful at dealing with the matchup. Uh, these are not going to be cards like Twin Twister, MST, Cosmic Cyclone. Those are obvious, right? These are going to be other cards that provide other utilities, and I'm going to be discussing with you why they are good for specific situations. But before that, if you are new here and want to see more videos like this one, I would implore you to subscribe. I would love to welcome you on board and show you more stuff. But other than that, if you end up liking this video, let me know when you're done by dropping a like on the video and maybe leaving some feedback in the comment section down below. Also, if you want to catch my tri-weekly streams, well not tri-weekly, thrice a week streams, then you can go to my Twitch page in the description down below and follow that. Or, if you're interested in the channel's Discord server where I hang out with other people and chat shit on a daily basis, then that is a place for you as well if you are interested. But, in order to understand how you are going to be countering the Mystic Mind Burn deck, you need to fully understand the basis of how the deck functions. So what I've got on screen for you here is a very basic Mystic Mind Burn deck. Uh, basically, the way you need to understand how this deck breaks down, if you are unfamiliar, is that Mystic Mine prevents you from activating monster effects if you control more monsters than your opponent does. Your opponent is almost always going to be controlling zero monsters, which means as soon as you summon one monster, you cannot activate any monster effects nor declare attacks as long as you control more monsters. And then during the end phase of either player's turn, if you and your opponent control the same number of monsters, this card destroys itself. So the way that this deck is played is it is going to be trying to establish Mystic Mine on the board on your turn by flipping Metaverse after you summoned a monster. So that way you have more monsters than they do because they're going to have zero and then you are going to be locked under the Mystic Mine. So the Mystic Mine will not be destroying itself because you control a monster and they don't. So your monster count is not the same and then they are going to be using that to shut off your entire play and since you cannot attack they're just going to be sitting back and amassing burn cards like Wave Motion Cannon, Just Desserts, Secret Blast, Secret Barrel, in order to win the game through just strictly in interact uninteractive burn cards. But the way they get to Metaverse consistently is that they are going to be getting to Metaverse with Trap Trick, and they're going to be setting it directly from deck with Lilith, the Lady of Lament. So that is basically what you need to understand about the fundamentals of this deck before you try to approach how to side deck against it. And then they have cards like Ojama Trio to ensure that you have more monsters than them uh, in certain situations, and then obviously cards like Dark Bribe and Song of Judgment to prevent the field spell from being destroyed by cards like Twin Twisters, MST, Cosmic Cyclone, what have you. So basically, that's the gist of what you need to understand about the deck, so now I'm going to tell you what I believe the best side deck cards are for dealing with this deck. So, in no particular order of best to worst, I'm going to be giving them to you right now. The first, and in my opinion, most impactful card against this deck uh, is Dinko Seka. This card is actually very, very powerful in this matchup for a multitude of reasons. First and foremost, like we previously established, the deck is trying to establish Metaverse so that it can flip Metaverse and activate the field spell on your turn after you summon a monster. They're never going to shotgun the Metaverse, because if you, they shotgun the Metaverse and put Mystic Mine on the board while you control no monsters and they control no monsters, you literally just have to end turn and the field spell outs itself by destroying itself. So they wait for you to summon a monster. 
meaning that most of what they're trying to do involves setting five, not having the field spell on the board turn one, although they can, but we will get into that later. And then if you normal summon Denko, you are basically just allowed to ravage their existence. You're allowed to do whatever you want to them because all of their burn traps are face down, their metaverses are face down, they cannot get their way into Mystic Mind because they waited for you to summon a monster, that monster was Denko Seka. So that's one of those situations where it's just an auto win if you side deck Denko Seka going second against this deck. Now, alternatively, Denko Seka is also very strong against this deck for a completely different reason. Now, it's not going to be super common, but if your opponent goes first with their Mystic Mind deck, it is possible for them to activate their field spell, turn one, and not have it destroy itself. The deck plays three copies of Lilith, the Lady of Lament. And so what the player usually will do is they will activate their Mystic Mind, normal summon their Lilith, they control more monsters than you do because you control none and they control Lilith, so Lilith cannot activate its effect. But that's fine. They set the rest of their cards, usually burn spells and traps and things of that nature, and then they're going to pass turn to you. The end phase comes, they control Lilith, you control no cards, so the monster number is not the same, so this is one of those only situations where Mystic Mine does not destroy itself. Now, Denko Seka is very good in this instance as well. What you're capable of doing with Denko in this situation, of the field spell being up and them having Lilith, is you're capable of normal summoning the Denko Seka, the field spell is already up, but the field spell only negates activated monster effects, or it prevents you from activating monster effects. Denko doesn't activate, it's a continuous effect. So you summon the Denko, now both you and your opponent control a monster. You control Denko and they control Lilith, now you can activate monster effects because of the fact that you both control the same number of monsters. But that doesn't stop there with the benefits. Because Lilith directly sets the trap from deck to the spell and trap card zone, the Lilith is no longer being prevented from being activated by the Mystic Mind because it's not, you know, preventing anything. You both control the same number of monsters. But it is being prevented from activating by Denko because Denko prevents your opponent from setting cards to their spell and trap card zone. So if you summon the Denko, they now cannot activate Lilith to tribute itself for cost to remove it from the field to make you have more monsters in them. So all you have to do from this point on is while their back row is locked, pass your turn to your opponent, you and your opponent now control one monster each, the Mystic Mind destroys itself because they can't get the Lilith off the board. And so now your opponent has all their locked back row and maybe has one card in hand. It's very valuable for you to summon Denko. Denko is arguably the best card to side deck versus this deck. Again, Denko being summoned, even if the field spell is already face up and live and you have different monster counts, Denko prevents all those burn traps from being activated, so that buys you time to draw into cards like Twin Twister, MST, Cosmic Cyclone, and then because Denko Seka is on the board and the deck scarcely has an out to it, it doesn't have an out to it in the main deck outside of Solemn Judgment. If it's side decks, it's going to have very few outs to Denko Seka, and what you're able to do is have the Denko on board, and then you destroy the field spell with an MST-like card, they cannot Dark Bribe you, they cannot Judgment you, and then they can't activate another Metaverse. So Denko Seka has tons of applications against this deck, but I could talk about Denko Seka for a while, so we're going to move on. But Denko Seka, in my opinion, definitely the best side deck card against this deck, because you just blow them out or in like multiple different ways, or you buy yourself infinite time, because once you summon Denko Seka, you, the only way you could lose is to Wave Motion Cannon. Another amazing side deck card against the Mystic Mind deck is, for the same sort of reasons, Red Reboot. This deck is trying to establish Metaverse to flip and activate Mystic Mind from the deck. So, if you catch them with Red Reboot and they don't have Judgment or Dark Bribe to negate the Red Reboot, you are able to set that Metaverse back to their field. They're not going to be able to flip anything like Ojama Trio or Burn Traps to deal with what you're going to be doing to them. They won't have Mystic Mind face up, and you are hopefully able to just OTK them flat out and if you're not able to OTK them, hopefully you're able to put up tons of negation-like effects that actually remove the Mystic Mind from the field and prevent it from getting there. Because then you are basically in the I-can't-lose position of the game. Now, obviously, Red Reboot is pretty weak if they do open the scarcely opened Mystic Mind plus Lilith turn one, because then you're not stopping the Mystic Mind from being on the board, and then all of a sudden you're paying 4,000 life off Red Reboot uh, to just not really uh, be allowed to play the game, I guess. If you do get Dark Bribed, Red Reboot does really suck because you just paid half your life points against a burn deck and got nothing out of it and you're still not able to play. 
Definitely has a lot more negatives associated with it than Dinko Seca does, but if your deck is normal summon reliant, Red Reboot might be the card that you are just trying to play versus this deck as well. Third card we're going to talk about is Evenly Matched. Now this card is kind of weird because your opponent can have a very valid out to it. But in normal circumstances, if your opponent does not have either Dark Bribe or Ojama Tria, well, Dark Bribe doesn't really out it. You could have multiple Evenlies. You could draw another Evenly off the Dark Bribe. Hee hee hee. Uh, but Ojama Trio is the real threat here. If you go into Battle Phase, activate Evenly Matched, they are going to banish everything except the Field Spell because they need the Field Spell to stay on the board because otherwise you're just going to be able to play all of your cards and steamroll them through whatever one trap card they keep. The only trap that they could arguably keep would be something like Balance of Judgment because that would allow them to possibly equalize on cards. But Evenly Matched Resolving is typically game over for this deck, specifically because it means they have to flip their burn spells in optimally, like Secret Blast and Secret Barrel. Just Desserts will probably not do anything. It won't do anything. You control no cards if you're activating evenly from hand. And then all those go away, and they have to leave the field spell on the board so that you don't just instantly put yourself in a winning position. So they have to keep the field spell off evenly matched. The problem with evenly matched when you're siding against this deck is because it is very unreliable. Uh, this deck plays cards like Ojama Trio, and some builds even play Ojama Duo to have more cards to put tokens on your side of the field. So if you enter battle phase and you go attempt to end battle phase, your opponent could easily flip Ojama Trio or Ojama Duo if they open that card, and that's capable of just keeping you from evenlying them for the rest of the game, essentially, and then you're just kind of stuck. You've given away your battle phase, you're in main phase two, you've got these Ojama tokens that you don't want, and they probably have Mystic Mine established. So it's not super clean cut in terms of evenly being always great against the deck, but when it resolves, it is game ending. So if your side deck does include evenly match in it for other matchups, you should probably definitely be putting it in for the Mystic Mind deck. The only cards that hard counter it in the worst ways are the Ojama cards, and if they don't open those, then you're usually fine. You typically end the game on the spot because outside of Balance of Judgment, they have no way to get those cards back that they just lost, and it's going to be turns before they have any sort of way to burn you significantly, and by that time you could have drawn another out. Fourth down on the list are two cards that do very similar things but operate very different ways, and that is Magic Deflector and Unending Nightmare. Now, Unending Nightmare is getting cited in the OCG for this deck. It is very good for obvious reasons. It is a continuous trap that is a constant source of face-up spell and trap removal, and it's also good against Pendulum decks if you're hitting scales that don't really matter as much if they're destroyed, like Servant of Endymion and stuff like that. But in this matchup, Unending Nightmare basically says pay 3,000 life points, destroy three Mystic Mines. So obviously that could be a problem if you are going to be getting, you know, the burn traps flipped against you. But once you out the Mystic Mines, you hopefully should be able to construct a play in a way that you don't get burned out, your opponent would have to have drawn a lot of burn traps very early if you opened with Unending Nightmare. Uh, and usually you should be fine from 5,000 life. Um, it's very, very scarce that you would be able to be burned from 5,000, especially if you're controlling the board state. But so Unending Nightmare is obviously good for that reason. Magic Deflector is a little bit better in some aspects because you can flip it and then it will just blanket negate the field spell for the rest of the turn. Alternatively, you could also play Imperial Order for this exact same purpose as a continuous card, but again, it burns you, so you might have some problems there. But, and then you might also be playing a spell deck that Imperial Order hurts you if you're activating Imperial Order. Uh, but Magic Deflector will negate the field spell for the turn, so it doesn't matter how many copies of it they have, they have to have a card that directly negates Magic Deflector. And then you are just able to play into their into their back row, into their board, try to kill them, try not to die, and basically just try to be in a commanding position to either win the game on the spot or to make it to where once that field spell goes live again, uh, you have some sort of way to answer it. But, I mean, it, honestly, you want to just be killing them, truthfully, if you're flipping Magic Deflector, and you'd obviously be playing Magic Deflector in a deck that could either kill your opponent really quickly, or you'd be playing a deck like Salamangrate that can just set up Rage uh, so that you can consistently keep raging the field spell and then getting Rage back. Uh, like, those are the kind of decks you'd be playing. Uh, you could Heat Leo away a bunch of their uh, back row and then establish Rage. Like, those are obvious ways that the decks 
can be played. Then the fifth set of cards I want to talk about are cards that are actually not trying to out the Mystic Mine at all, but are cards that are trying to make your opponent take some of the medicine that they're trying to give to you. And that is cards that prevent you from losing the game to, to burn damage. Big cards in this category would be DDD, Rebel King Leonidas, that can be cited in Pendulum decks. You can just Pendulum Summon it for free. It's a continuous effect, you take no effect damage. You can't get Just Deserted, you can't get Secret Barreled, you can't get Secret Blasted, you can't get Wave Motion Cannon. So as long as your opponent has less cards in their deck than you do, which they typically do because they go through Metaverse, they go through Trap Trick, they go through Lilith, they have Card of Demise, Pot of Extravagance, Pot of Duality. As long as you control your access into the cards like this, like Leonidas, Prime Material Dragon is another really good one. Um, if you're playing a DDD deck, you have access to uh, Duo Dawn, not Duo Dawn King, uh, Oracle King Dark, the Arc, the fusion that you gain life points instead of losing it. There are a bunch of other cards like this uh, that have these sorts of effects, like Perform Age Trapeze Magician. This one's a little bit stranger because it's like you can only take burn damage if it's over 2,500 damage, which means Wave Motion Cannon can still kill you, but Just Desserts, Secret Blast, and Secret Barrel are going to have to be struggling to get high up into that burn threshold. But these kind of cards are cards that you can see how many cards your opponent's left playing because deck count is public knowledge, and as long as your deck has more cards in it than your opponent does, you summon this card, like Leonidas in a Pendulum deck, you can just Pendulum Summon it, and you can be like, alright, I can't take burn damage. Pass. 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 You have less cards in your deck than I do, you're going to deck out. You've literally stalled yourself yourself to death. And that's the kind of strategy that you can implore. It's not fun, it's not exciting, uh, but it could be sort of rewarding in a really sadistic way of making your opponent take their own medicine. But those are, in my opinion, the best ways that you should be looking to approach cards for siding for this matchup. Honorable mentions go out to cards that you can activate preemptively, like Closed Forest or Field Barrier, to prevent your opponent from ever activating the field spell, but those cards have to be played going first, and if you're going first with this deck and you're playing any deck that's sort of competent, you shouldn't really be needing cards to side for going first, and like there are other cards that you could side, like Red Reboot and Unending Nightmare that were already on this list that are just as good at going first, because you could set them up onto your board have your own plays established, and then when your opponent's trying to do their stuff, you have outs in the form of these better cards. But I digress. That's basically what I wanted to talk about in this video for you. This deck is very, very volatile and very hard to counter if you're unprepared for it. Hopefully, I gave you some ideas on what you should be looking for. Side Denko Saga. That card is the easiest way to play against this deck. I've done a lot of testing against it. You summon Denko, and it's just game. Usually. Or you have infinite time, like I said earlier. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, like I said before, if you're new here, make sure to subscribe. I'd love to welcome you on board. I'd love to show you more stuff. And if you liked the video, now's the point to hit that little like button and let me know what you thought about the video in the comments down below. But other than that, like I already said, Twitch and Discord links are in the description down below if you're interested. But other than that, that is going to be it for this video. Let me know your thoughts, like I've already said. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys. And take care. I'll see you in the next video.